Welcome to the Morningstar How-To Training Video Series. In this video, we are going to review how to update the firmware on your TriStar MPPT charge controller. First, let's review a few basics relevant to the TriStar MPPT charge controller. When powering off your charge controller, always disconnect solar prior to disconnecting battery. And the opposite is true when powering on the charge controller. Always connect battery prior to connecting solar. While you're performing a firmware update, you will want solar disconnected. Also, if you're custom programming your charge controller, we would also recommend that solar be disconnected. If you've custom programmed your controller, always make a backup of the custom program prior to updating the firmware. We are not going to review this process in this video. However, if you need assistance with backing up your configuration, please consult our website at support.morningstarcorp.com to check for resources on how to do so or contact our technical support team. Let's quickly review the tools you're going to need to perform the firmware update. You're going to need a Windows PC. You will need a USB to serial adapter cable to connect your PC to your charge controller. There's many brands out there and many brands will work to serve this function. So if you already have a cable, by all means, Let's try this cable to see if it works. If there's issues getting the controller to connect to the PC, it could be the cable you're using. And we recommend a trip light model U-209-000-1. R cable, as this cable functions well with our products. You will need to download and install Morningstar's MS View program onto your PC. You also need to download Morningstar's MS Load program and have that available on your PC. And you're going to need the firmware files. You will need an A firmware file if you have an MPPT 30 or 45. And if you have an MPPT 60, you will need the A and B firmware files. Note that the A firmware file is model specific. And there's an A version for the MPPT 30 and 45, that is one file, and a separate A version file for the MPPT 60. Please be sure you download the appropriate A file for your particular controller. You're also going to need a battery or DC power supply to power on the charge controller. In addition, you may also want to use a flat ribbon style DB9 male to DB9 female cable. Uh, this particular cable is not mandatory, however, due to uh, constraints in accessing the serial connector on the charge controller while wiring is in place and whatnot, you may find that having this cable makes connecting to the controller easier and therefore the firmware update process easier. Software downloads that you're going to need are available under the software tab at our support website and we'll show you how to uh, access this in a minute. The downloads will be in a .zip format and they need to be extracted before use. We'll cover this in a moment and show it to you. The MS View program is used to determine the current firmware installer as well as the COM port the controller is connected to on your PC. The MS Load program is what is actually used to update the firmware file. There's a README file in the MS Load download that has step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the firmware update. And we're going to review this in this video. So the first step in the process is to download, extract, and install the necessary files and programs on your PC. So let's take a look at doing so. So to download the files, you will need to open a web browser and navigate to our support website. Again, this is support.morningstarcorp.com. When you've reached the web page, you want to choose a product. In this particular case, we're going to choose the TriStar MPPT, and you'll select Go. Again, once you're here, you'll navigate to the Software tab, and you'll see the files that you need to download. Again, MS Load, MS View, the MPPT Processor A firmware, and the Processor B firmware. Again, the Processor B is only for the TriStar MPPT 60. So let's go ahead and download these files by clicking over here on the download button. And you'll see that they download as a .zip. In this particular circumstance, the PC is set to download these files to the downloads folder. 
uh, you'll have to check on your particular PC what folder you're downloading the files to. So I'm just going to go through the, and download these files. And at that point, we are finished with the website. So we can minimize the screen. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And here are the files. Again, they're in .zip format and need to be extracted. With Windows 7, 8, 10, um, and newer versions of Windows, you can simply right click on the folders to extract them. Uh, if you don't have that ability, you'll have to use some kind of extraction utility such as WinZip. So anyway, again, we're going to simply right click, do an extract all. It's going to ask me where I want to extract to, and I'm just going to extract it to the same folder and tell it to extract. And it has created this new folder with the files, as you can see. So I'm just going to run through this for the other three remaining folders. So now I have the folders with the files I have in them. I am going to go ahead and delete these other zip folders off my computer just so there's no confusion about what folder I'm working in. Okay, so the next step is we want to install the MS View program onto our PC. So we'll navigate to the MS View program folder and execute the setup file. And we will let this install onto the PC. Basically, just have to accept the defaults, accept the license, and tell it to install. The installation is very quick and should only take a couple seconds to complete. So, we are done installing MS View. The next is MS Load. There's actually no install that has to occur here. And here's the README file with the instructions. You can simply copy and paste this to your desktop if you'd like. That uh, makes it easier wherever you want to execute the program from. I also like to put MS View onto my desktop um, so it's easy to find. The easiest way to do that is to navigate to the Morningstar folder. You'll see a Morningstar folder, and under it, you'll see MS View. If you right click on this, select More, you can open the file location, and then you can simply right click on the file and do a Send to Desktop. And now I have a shortcut on my desktop for my MS View program as well. Okay, so at this point, I have all the files I need to perform the firmware update. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, for the next step, you're going to need to install the software driver for your serial adapter cable on your PC. This uh, software driver enables the, the cable to work with the PC for the PC to recognize the cable. Um, if you're using the triplet cable, it will either have come with a CD with the software driver on it, However, we would recommend visiting TripLite's website to obtain the most current version of the driver and install that on the PC. Okay, so the next step, you're going to want to physically connect your charge controller to the Windows PC. To do this, you simply take your USB to serial adapter cable and plug the USB end into a port, a USB port on your computer and the 9-pin serial end will connect to the TB9 connector on the charge controller. In the next step, you're going to want to use the MSView program to determine the COM port on your PC that the charge controller is connected to. And you're also going to want to confirm the current version of firmware that's installed on the PC. So let's take a look at doing this. At this point, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure that the charge controller is powered on. You do this by connecting the battery. Again, you only want battery connected. You do not want solar connected at this time. 
So we're going to go ahead and open the MS View program. When it opens, you can click on devices, search for connected devices. If your charge controller is powered on and all the cabling is correct and software drivers is installed, you should, it should find your controller very quickly, as you can see here. And over here, this is your COM address. You're going to want to make note of this. You'll need to know what COM port you're using uh, for the connection so you can tell MS Load which COM port to use. So our charge controller in this particular circumstance is connected to COM3. Next, we want to find out what version of firmware is currently on it. So we go ahead and connect to the charge controller. When it gets the green icon next to it, it has connected. You can right click on it, go to properties, and then click on the information tab. And you'll see the top line gives you the firmware version. This particular controller has version 26 installed. As of the posting of this video, we have a version 29.1, so this one is out of date. And we're going to go ahead and perform the update. So you can go ahead and cancel out. At this point, you'll want to right click and disconnect MS View from the program. Uh, it will turn the icon red next to the charge controller. This will then make it available for MS Load to be able to connect to the charge controller. So now we know our COM port and our current version of software. Let's move on to updating the processor A firmware. First, we're going to want to power off the charge controller, make sure it's turned off. So again, if solar is connected, if it's a live system, you want to disconnect solar first and then power off battery. Now we'll turn off the charge controller. You're going to select the correct firmware file. You're going to select the correct COM port. And when MS Load prompts you, you're going to power on the charge controller, and that will uh, start the firmware update process. Um, when it's completed, you're going to receive a green checkbox indicating that the uh, firmware update was successful. And at that point, you're going to want to power cycle the charge controller again and uh, then use MSView again to confirm that the new version of firmware is in fact installed. So let's take a look at uh, this process. You're going to go ahead and open the MS Load program. Just say OK to the first prompt that comes up. You get a warning about uh, saving your custom programming settings before doing the firmware update. Again, please do this if you've custom programmed your charge controller. Next, you want to browse to the file that you're going to use. So we're going to browse our files we put in the Downloads folder. I'm using the TriStar A version and our TriStar A29.1. As you can see here, here's the Part A version 29.1. Select Next. Select your COM port, COM3. Next, it will prompt you to turn on your TriStar. Go ahead and flip your uh, disconnect for your battery or connect your battery power up. And when you do that, it will connect up and the update will begin. The A version takes approximately one minute to complete. When it's finished, you'll receive the green checkbox and a reminder to power cycle your charge controller to resume normal operations. So if we go back to MS View, search for our controller, connect, navigate to properties and the info tab, we will now see that we are on version 29 firmware. So when you can cancel out. Since we have an MPPT60, uh, we have a firmware version B that we need to update as well. Uh, it's the same process, but I'll run you through it real quickly. 
Again, you'd want to turn off your charge controller, open MS load, navigate to where it asks you what firmware file you're going to use. In this case, we're going to browse and select the B firmware. Click Next. Verify our port again is COM3. Next, it will ask us to turn the charge controller on. Turn it on and it will begin the update. This uh, B firmware takes considerably more time to install, uh, but once it has successfully finished, you should receive the green checkbox. So we have successfully completed. You can exit the program and again power cycle your charge controller. So that concludes how to update the firmware. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at www.morningstarcorp.com. Thank you.